Hey everyone, today we are going to look at how to fix an over-notched floor joist. So this room is about 15 and change by, it's 15.4 by 15.4. And we opened up the ceiling. Um, we're gonna be doing a, a nice partially exposed uh, ceiling because some of these beams are in really good shape. So I'm gonna flash a picture on the screen to show you what that's gonna look like. Uh, but obviously while everything is open, there are a few things we'd like to fix. So for one, obviously this, this, this is insane. This is, <laughs> this is a pretty bad notch in, in the beam. Um, so of course this needs to be corrected. I just fixed another one right here. This was much less severe, um, but it, it was a notch that was almost halfway through the beam. I'll, I'll post a picture so you can see. And I'm gonna do a similar fix to this one as I did here. So basically what I did is I ripped uh, some pieces of three quarter inch ply because uh, I have I have so much of this stuff lying around the house, I figured I might as well put it to use. So I ripped those to size, get up a little higher in here, and pretty much just took some wood glue, clamped them together on both sides, and then hit it with my framing nailer, which I just bought, and this is my first time using a framing nailer, so this is gonna be, should be fun. Um, you wanna use nails because nails have more shear strength than screws. So I'm using 16D framing nails. Um, basically what that means is if there's any, when there's any flex, because beams will flex when they have weight put on it. Um, we, want, we want a little bit of, we wanna allow for the nail to kind of wiggle a little bit while it's in the assembly because a screw is more likely to snap under immense pressure. A nail has a little bit of bendability um, there's going to be other things that I'm going to do to stiffen the floor because it is kind of bouncy. I'm going to install blocking, but I'll probably do that in a different video. So for this, I'm going to do a similar fix right there. Um, but I'm going to use two sheets of plywood on both sides. It's basically going to run from there to there. Um, and it's going to cover, that's almost half the, the length of the beam, as you can see. Now, some people might say, Matt, why don't you just sister the whole beam. Um, that's one way to do it, but I'm gonna show the image on the screen of the, the living room renovation again. Um, with some of these beams being exposed on this side, I really want to avoid having to get a modern uh, two by uh, piece of floor joist and have to sister it up because you know once this is all sanded, um, these beams are gonna look really nice. So this is an alternative method. Uh, I consulted with an engineer friend of mine and he he said it, it should be fine the good thing is that it's on the edge of the beam it's, it's towards the end if it was in the middle the mid span which is the weakest point of the beam it would be a little more concerning and i would probably either have to replace the beam or sister it um and one more thing I'm, I'm expecting somebody in the comments to say you know now's a good time to make sure the floor is level you know jack it up um, because this is an old house, so there is kind of a slope on the second floor. But we we already redid the bathroom up there. We already did a bunch of framing, and I'm afraid if I push up on the ceiling, um, that it's going to crack all of the, you know, make some drywall cracks and you know affect some of the work that we already did. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and install this fix, and I will show you the aftermath when it's done. All right, here is the end result. So like I said, we doubled up on this beam, which was way worse than this one. Um, doubled up there and there's the long piece and then there's the short guy over there. So like I said, my first time using this nail gun. Um, man, that thing is powerful. So I tried to space it out like six to eight inches um, horizontally. Ideally you wanna make a zigzag pattern is what I was told um, in certain areas I didn't really achieve that for right there that's because there's really nothing up there so I didn't want to shoot it through and then have it kind of go through the plywood I don't know if that would happen but I'm just probably being over cautious and I think what's here is more than sufficient um, for what had to for what had to get done now I did 
actually stuff this hole with a piece, a smaller piece of um, timber that was taken out of this house at some point, just to fill it uh, with something so that when I glue it and then when I clamp everything, it kind of compresses and it acts as, as a filler to the beam. I'm not really sure. It was like a, it was a spur of the moment thing. I'm not really sure what it's, if it's gonna do much, but I just feel like it'll, like I said, allow for the whole thing to kind of act, g give something to bite on in there. Otherwise it's just empty. So I think that it, I think that it's gonna help a little bit at least. Um, and yeah, I guess last but not least, um, when I was talking to people about this, they said, why are you gonna use plywood and not dimension lumber? Like I have, you know, I have two by eights, I have two by tens kind of throughout the house. The answer is number one, I have so much plywood I have to get rid of. Number two, um, plywood is actually used as a bracing mechanism for buildings. So when a building goes up, you might have seen videos of buildings that fall down because they're just stick built. They don't have any of the sheathing up yet. That's because the sheathing is really what's keeping it together. It's preventing the building from racking back and forth, um, bending, twisting, turning. So the plywood is a structural element as much as it is a substrate to nail or secure your siding to. Um, so it, it is in a way um, load-bearing or maybe not load-bearing, but it does contribute to the structural integrity of the building. So um, for this purpose, I think I, I'm gonna trust its tensile strength uh, more so than say a piece of dimension lumber. And uh, I think, you know, if I didn't rip the ceiling up, we would have never known that was there and maybe it would have been fine over the years, but um, you know, obviously wanna do the right thing. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think, or if you've solved this problem a different way, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks.